Yo guys, my name is I Games, and welcome back to Let's Play The Letter, where we last left off, we went into the BRC building to get as much information as we can about anyone who has worked with the Ermengarde Mansion, no matter who it was. Um, we found out a few people um, were connected um, that to the mansion, even people who just went to the open house, just for the open house, ended up missing or dying. Um, there was two people that um, went to the open house that were affected. Um, it was uh, an older lady had a heart attack, which is that could be either she either died from old age, you know, it happened from old age, or it could have been from the ghost or the curse. And I just realized my thing is not correct. There we go. There we go. Yo guys, my name is Ali Games, and welcome back to Let's Play The Letter, where we last left off. We went into the BRC building with Isabella, and we got some information about people who have worked with BRC that worked on the Ermengarde Mansion, whether it was, you know, the contractors, anyone that worked with the, um, the restorations, even the appraiser got affected, and anyone who went to the open house. There was two people that were affected from the open house. Um, one woman went missing. They never found her. She went missing three days later. And there was one woman where it was, it's kind of, um, it's not really sure because she was an older lady. She died in her sleep. She had a heart attack. So that one's kind of like, okay, that could have been an old age thing or it could have been the curse. We don't know. But anyways, Ash believes now. He has seen her, the woman, firsthand. And we are with Isabella. Um, at this point, Zach, we just called Zach. Zach is coming back from the mansion. Um, and Rebecca is at the library after meeting with Professor Clark. So anyways, um, we got a new journal entry. It was this one. After that close call, Ashton spent the night at Isabella's, only to be kept awake by Nightwing nightmares. At an utter loss with, and with all of his beliefs overturned, Ashton decided to check on Zachary and Rebecca. Unfortunately, only Zachary returned his calls, but Rebecca's okay. She's alive. We're, we made sure that she's alive. Even the muscles in my shoulders have been complaining from all the tension I've taken on. It still annoys me that all I can do right now is grip my teeth and trudge back to Isabella's apartment. So we just got, I think we just got off the phone with um, Zach and we couldn't get a hold of Rebecca at all. That are useless. That's what I am. What that's what I am in the face of this. A mad dash around Luxport and Anselm isn't going to help things. It's not like I'll simply stumble across them on the side of the road during a drive. The city's too big. The city's too big a place for one person to go searching for only two people. I'll be lucky if even, I haven't even glimpsed the hair of either of them. With one last hopeful glance towards the open skies. I slipped back into Isabella's apartment and closed the door behind me. Well, you know Zach's on his way. So, we know that. And this is like... Being... Can we like take that off? Because you're being a... No, what are you doing, computer? Stop it. It's not... Sorry, this fucking thing. I don't know clue what I'm doing. Can't wait for the auto, please. Whatever. I don't know. It's being, it's stupid. I might have already grown used to this, but the waiting will always, always be the hardest part. More so when it's the people you care about. Why is there question marks? We know who it is. This is not the first time I've seen Isabella like this. Standing casually by her kitchenette, a ladle in hand, keeping an eye on whatever's stewing on the stove while humming a soft tune under her breath. Five years ago, this has become a common sight after the three of them, including Zack and Rebecca, found a mutual interest in cooking. After that, whenever our schedules allow it, one of them will invite everyone to dinner or lunch, instead of eating out. Rebecca prefers it that way, healthier, she claims. Zach's just too happy to be able to cook for everyone. Isabella, on the other hand, as long as there's food, she's happy. Me? I've been banned from the kitchen ever since the pressure cooker incident. 
easier times, good times. Right now, however, the scene brings an odd sense of normalcy, a strange fit with all the things going on, going on around us. Not unwelcome, only bizarre, I suppose? Isabella doesn't follow up on her question earlier, but she does raise an eyebrow my way when I take too long to answer. For that, I only offer a casual shrug in response and a short answer. I've checked with Zack and Rebecca. I'm just waiting to hear back from them. Well, I didn't clip or two from her, if the timing for a joke isn't off or doing so won't be inappropriate. I don't want to alarm her either. There's no reason to. Yet. Until Zack gets here or until I've, answered, I've received an answer from, from Rebecca. Whichever comes first. Nevertheless, it's clear she has plenty of options. It's right there in the subtle crease in her, between her eyebrows and the inquisitive gleam in her eyes. Curious as she is, though, she decides against voicing all of her questions out. Instead, she shifts her attention back to the stove and gestures vaguely with her hand in the couch's direction. Well, if we're going to wait for them, don't stand around there. It's getting distracting. You're just cooking. How am I distracting? I don't know. Something might explode again, maybe. Zach's kitchen ban for you is also an effect. Oh, so I have it at Zach's. Now, Shu, go. Stop hovering. You'll ruin the food. I'll be done here soon. She leaves no room for argument by swatting the ladle at me. And just like that, I've been kicked out of the kitchen. Left with nothing else to do, I drift back to her tiny living space and slumped down on the couch. Closing my eyes, I allow the noise from the television to guide my thoughts. The ones I've been keeping at bay, freeing them from the cage I've built around them, so I don't have to think. One by one, they trickle back into my consciousness, each more frightening and unnerving than the other. So many things going on. So many things happening. The papers we've gotten from BRC doesn't provide any comfort either. Seriously, is there even a point to those after last night? What will asking these those people do? If anything, it's only proof that there might be more copies of that dumb piece of paper. We have one here, but how many exactly is out there? More importantly, how do we get out of this stupid mess? Ashton. Damn it. I haven't felt this kind of bone-weary exhaustion in years. I don't want to think what might happen next in case I miss something. Shit. Rebecca. Zack. Isabella. They're all depending on me and- Ash! The voice snaps me out of my thoughts, abruptly wiping every away everything running a racket inside my head. Suddenly, Isabella's there, crouched in front of me when I crack an eye open. I haven't even noticed the exact moment when I bent over and buried my head in my hands. Figures why she's staring at me like I fainted or something. The crease in her eyebrows grow deeper at my lack of response. Although she's merely staring at me, without saying a word, her expression says everything. So much for trying not to alarm her with bad news. Sorry, I just spaced out for a moment. Don't mind me. For a brief moment, she seems to accept that. Quietly, she shifts, stands up, and takes the empty space right beside me. All done without a single comment. And the next thing I know, she's, just, she's gently pushing a bowl in my hands. Ooh, that actually looks good. The scent reaches me first, before I got the chance to take in what she had just handed me. A faint, sweet smell of cocoa wafts, wafts, wafts from the dish. Calming, comforting, despite the multitude of things bothering me, it certainly smells like the kind of food you'll eat on a rainy day. Though from the get-go, it doesn't look as appetizing. What is this even? Porridge? Why would you put chocolate in it? And milk drizzled on top? She tells me my tastes are weird, yet here she is, handing me something equally as... strange. In fact, she has already di started digging in hers. I'm just not sure if the taste will be equally as appealing. Baffled, I glance her way. She offers no immediate answer, simply continues eating as if she hasn't done so in a week, with her focus solely on the television. She's not watching, however, just listening. As a background noise, the voices from it seem too cheerful, a welcome distraction, if anything. It's only after she's finished off half the bowl that she acknowledges the question in my eyes. With a sigh, she cradles the dish on her lap and looks down at it. Briefly, her lips part, then closes. A hesitation, though I don't push her. There's a distant air on her, as if she has remembered something that warrants a poignant thought. When she speaks at last, it's in a tone too careful, like she's still weighing her words, considering the proper phrasing for it. Yet, sincerity underlies each syllable once they're out in the open. 
You should eat. Back at home, Mama would never let us leave the house if we hadn't eaten breakfast yet. Even Papa has gotten an earful when he tried. So eat. You'll need it. She returns to her food afterwards. Well, I can only stare at the one she has uh, she has preferred not a few minutes ago. Warm against my hands. Tempted me to take a bite. Not that I don't appreciate this, but what good will this do? Zach and Rebecca's both out there. Who knows what that ghost will when that ghost will show up again? Even in our dreams, we're not safe. But that's it, isn't it? We don't know when. And at present, we have a chance at respite. A respite? Respite, I think. Maybe the only one we'll have. Even if it's a mundane, even if it's as mundane as sharing food between us, quietly, just sitting side by side like this, without exchanging any words. The intent hangs unspoken in the air. Something that probably goes far, as far as back as the second she offered food. Still, in the end, Isabella never pushes it. Rather, she lets her own silence convey her hope. Whether I allow myself that break, she leaves up to me. Brill, eat the food. Thank you. The words roll off my tongue, awkward and familiar, or unfamiliar, far removed from those jests and quips they've shared. Yet she accepts this with a smile and nothing more. Regardless of everything left unsaid, the sight of it brings comfort, more so than any generous offer of food can give. Though we both lapse into a silence after, as we finish our food, there's ease in it. And this, and the muffled sounds of Luxborn filtering into the room, and the light streaming from her windows and the faint draft occasionally drifting in, catching those tendrils of her hair, and the way her voice falters when she tries to form words. And despite the horror looming over us, I find myself wishing for the minutes to slow, for the seconds to last. But ultimately, she is the one who breaks it. Softly, after a minute's pause, and words mumbled under her breath. Sometimes, silence simply compels us to speak. I've been wondering, you know, before last night, before Mama told me the news, what if, what if Papa passes away, despite everything? That sort of thing. I know it's not good to think about, but I also knew it was getting worse. Mama won't say anything, but... I've always known that one day, he'll eventually... She releases a sigh as her grip on the bowl she looks, she still holds tightens. There are no tears, but she might as well have them with how weak her voice falls. Are there even any left? I don't know what I'm going to do. Before... I can easily say it's because of Papa. Now... I don't have anything. You have that scholarship from LuxU. Were you going through my personal papers while I was sleeping last night? Maybe. I don't really have to. You left it sitting in the open, right there on the table. Like there's still anything to hide. She snatches it away from where I placed it back earlier. Except there's no anger or annoyance in her face when she looks at it and rereads every line with a pensive expression. After a short while, she folds it neatly along the creases and sets it back. I don't even know if this will work out. Well, if it doesn't, what about that exhibit you've been planning with Zack? Do I even have to ask where you got that? Zack sucks at lying. You have no idea how easy he is to Say read. it! It was all in his face when I asked about it. And anyway, if that doesn't pan out too. I trail off, trail off hesitating, measuring the weight of my next words. Genuine as they are, a part of, excuse me, a part of me believes they are a burden, too heavy to impose on her. Because no matter how much I want her to stay, we are not what ties her here. It will be selfish to ask that of her. More than anything, her family will always come first. I say it nevertheless, if only to let her know that no matter what her choice will be, there will be people here whose lives her who lives here. There will be people who here whose lives her mere presence has changed. It's a weird sentence. I don't know why. Mine, most of all. You, you have us. The words startle her to pause, to a pause, and slowly she turns to me, her eyes wide, disbelief all over her face. But before regret forces an apology up my, up my throat, her expression dissolves into something I can't quite place. Something distinctly softer, more tender, familiar, almost in the same manner she glanced at me years ago, that day at the bridge. However, I don't get the chance to figure out what it all means for her. All of a sudden, a knock breaks the moment and just as fast, both our attentions shift towards the source. Before things can get awkward fast, 
I stood up to open the door while muttering some flimsy excuse in the process. Uh, I'll get that. It's probably Zach or Rebecca. Probably Rebecca first. Really, I know we're in a pinch, but the time we can't get any worse. Re Unrelated frustrations aside, once I fling the door open, a whole chunk of stone that has been stuck in the pit of my stomach simultaneously, un simultaneously unseats itself. There in the hallway stands Zack, his hand raised ready for another knock. Although he's not in his most presentable at, the, presentable at the moment, ruffled and drenched with sweat as he is, relief quickly washes over me like a tide. He's still panting when he pushes me aside and heads in. The second his feet crosses the threshold, he scans the place, eyeing what little he can, he can see of the room from the doorway. When he finds none of whatever he's looking for, he turns to me with a questioning look, one that has a hint of panic in it. You said it was urgent. Did anything happen? Is it Becca? Bella? Everyone's fine. Well, Becca's not here. She went somewhere this morning and hasn't answered any of my calls yet. But Isabella's... I'm here, Zach. Morning. His way shifts at the same time the stiff line in his shoulder eases, once Isabella walks up to us and welcomes him with a smile. He relaxes then, returns her greeting at kind. As soon as he's let out the last... Uh, let out the breath he, was, he has been holding, the tension's finally off his body. So, nothing's wrong? Why'd you call me here Cause for Because we found out shit. My explanation can wait. He has a lot of explaining to do. The fact that he went to Anselm alone, for some, for some godforsaken reason, warrants a proper one. Ghost or not, he's already been given a warning. It frustrates me to no end. This might be the plan he mentioned the last time we spoke. I get that he's worried about Hana Wright. Somehow they've become friends, but that's not the issue here. Not when there's a murderous ghost who might go after one of us at any given time. Sure, Zack made it here in one piece. By some dumb luck, he's all right. And this takes one of the one off the list of people I need to worry about. Frankly, as annoyed as I am, I can't just stay angry at him when I look at the situation that way. Hell, if that call didn't connect in the exact minute, there might have been a chance he won't be standing here. This is a blessing in itself. Though, first things first. Some things still need, need to be discussed. Alright. Don't be mad because just... Alright. Don't, don't, don't... You, you can't be mad at him. You know, it's like you can't... Except when I open my mouth, the only thing that spills out from what is my own relief. Despite myself, despite the rational part of my brain screaming everything wrong about Zack's neat little plan. We've had so many close calls within just a single night. Zack showing up at Isabelle's doorstep, alive, whole, and unharmed? I... I might as well take comfort in it while I still can. You're... You're okay. Yeah, cause, uh, last time he was, uh... He was in a jail cell with his eyes ripped out. You did tell me not to do anything stupid. Suddenly, the whole room feels too heavy, and all I'm able to do is drop down on the couch. The headaches been, headaches also threatens to burst in the same moment. Or perhaps this is, this is what release from anxiety feels like. Regardless, I reach up a hand to pinch the bridge of my nose, even if it's a, even if it, it'll likely do nothing to alleviate the impending pain. Christ, you were right there. We have this stupid, stupid, stupid curse thing going on, and you were right there. You just walked up inside a private property. Those people can easily sue you for breaking and entering, and that's the least of it. I know, Ash, but I can't just leave things as they are. I've got to do something. God damn it, Zack, I was worried. <laughs> Unexpectedly, he laughs. Not the half-hearted story he makes when he's awkward or coming up with an excuse. A genuine one. Before my annoyance goes again and I snap at him, though, he suddenly catches me in a headlock. His arms looping around my neck while he grind his... While he ground... While he grind his knuckles against my skull. Helpless, I squirm under his grip and protest. Even then, it's hard to do so, do so when you're up against a six-footer. Zack! No, he's worried. Why didn't you say so? <laughs> that cool act ain't gonna fool me anymore. Let go. He relents soon enough, though only after he's done ample damage in my hair. I hate it when he does that. But for a few moments there, the tense mood finally lightened up and everything felt like how it used to be before this whole mess began. Makes appreciating little moments like this easier, still. Seriously, Zack, why are you even there? Told you already. I was looking for you. Why would I even go there? 
Well, you mentioned a plan with Isabella here. I assume that's where you guys went, since that's where she found the letter. Sorry, I was really at a dead end. The logic in it stuns me into silence, to say the least. Then I remember his hesitance. The tone he has taken before agreeing to go here, and all at once my anger for when he has, when he done, when he's done wanes. Partly, this is my fault for keeping things vague. I can't berate him for assuming that, when I've only left him with vague answers. You could have called me. I did. I didn't receive any, and my phone was with me. You're kidding, right? I was at it the whole night. The whole atmosphere in the room changes in two heartbeats. Back again to the tension riddle one plaguing us. Zachary stares at me like I could grown another head. Then gradually, he shifts his attention to Isabella. The expression in his eyes is questioning, asking for a confirmation. Like my word can't be trusted. Not that I'm holding it against him. I can't even believe the things coming out of my mouth these past few hours. Meanwhile, Isabella stays quiet. Has been like that for quite some time. She looks like she wants to disappear right now. Guilt, frustration, anger, fear, all the flashes fleeting all all fla all flashes fleetingly across her face before it melts away under an expression of worry. Please tell me he's joking. You were there? No, we really didn't get any. Everything was quiet last night. But Zack at BRC? Ashton and I saw She never gets to finish that. Sup, Bob Astral Deluxe City. <laughs> Abruptly, my phone rings again, blaring its badly sang ringtone throughout the whole room. Both of them pauses, waiting, when I pull it up to check the color ID. That's a white triangle! Without another word, I slip out of the room and answer the call. However, the tone she assumes isn't what I'm hoping to hear. Ragged, a bit out of breath, there's a tiny, there's a tinge of urgency in it. Listening to her from my side of the line makes it seem like she has just run a marathon prior to this call. Becca, where? I got your message. What happened? Nothing. Yet. Where are you? Downtown. I, I had to make a quick visit to the library. Let me try something. No? That's weird. Okay, we'll read this anyway. Alright. After leaving the friend's um, urgent message, Ashton ret uh, returned to Isabel's apartment. He found the girl already up and about, cooking. Seeing his ex exhaustion, he f Isabel reminded him that he should take care of himself first and offered him food. With the mother thanks, he accepted. Anymore. Alright. Zachary arrived at Salem Well, tired and frazzled. Upon learning that he had come from the Ermagard mansion that morning, Ashton could only express his relief that he was safe. It amused Zachary teased him for worrying, much to the other man's embarrassment. Listen, Ash, about that thing Isabella has been talking about. There's something you guys need to... Please tell me you didn't... <sighs> Whatever. Save it for later. I'm at Salem Well. If you can get here as soon as possible, that'd be really great. This is... related to that. You're there? Is, is Isabella with you? Yeah, Zach too. With a quick press of the button, I switch on the loudspeakers and step back into Isabel's apartment. I don't know why it's not showing up. I hold out the phone towards the two, giving it two shakes, urging them to speak. Both are still carrying worried looks on their faces. This should ease that. Rebecca's asking for you two. Becca? Is she okay? Hey, Becca! Hello, Rebecca. Odd morning we have, eh? Hey, you two. What, what's happening over there? About? No, but we need to have a meeting. We'll tell you once you get here. Please hurry. I don't like the sound of that, Ash. Uh, but I'm on my way. It gives me a few minutes. I'm driving. She mumbles a goodbye, then hangs up. Becca's the last person I need to account for, yet that call left an even more strained tension in the room. Thankfully, we don't have to linger in it for too long. She only takes a matter of minutes to get here. The second she steps into the room, Isabella clings to her. I'm so glad you're okay. Safe and sound. I on you this morning, but all of us are here. <laughs> he did. I I'm sorry. I was in a hurry. I didn't have time to drop by and let you know. I wonder. I want to look at something super quick with Isabella. I wonder if you can kill. You might be able to kill her. I wonder. One of the which one? I wonder if one of these is a bad end. 
That would be cool. I should try that sometime. I, I will try that one day. It doesn't matter. What's important is you're here. Not Bert. Oh, goodness. Bert to a crisp or brutally murdered somewhere. Whole. Alive. Although she seems a bit shaken. It doesn't matter. It doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things. At least now I can relax. Ease the pressure off my shoulders, if only by some. But the minute Isabella pulls away from her, she winces. A small reaction. The younger woman doesn't even catch it. It sets a, pre a precedent for a careful observation in the list. A closer look at her reveals a much more disheveled than, reveals a much more disheveled than usual. Hair in a bit of a mess, probably flattened in a hurry. The back of her dress also shows stains of dirt in places it rarely gets into. She's also leaning more on, on her on using her left arm. She's right-handed. Perhaps the most telling is the light limb she has. She has. Noticeable once Isabella leads her into the room. It all sprouts a hate, a hateful, a hate, hatful, hatful of questions. Oop. What exactly happened and how she ended up in that state? Pretty sure a simple trip to the library won't do that. I grab for her arm before she can walk past, carefully to avoid hurting her, in case there really is an injury. Seems like it at first glance, but you can't be sure until after a careful examination has been made. I suspect some bruising at least. Although minor internal fractures are out of, the, out of the equation, they have a nasty way of staying hidden. Sure enough, Becca tenses immediately upon contact. Tries to pull back, although the sudden gesture only elicits another wince, forcing her and Isabella to halt. Both of them turn to me almost at the same time, their eyes searching mine for answers. Rebecca, for her part, doesn't appear quite pleased with the interruption, or the fact that someone has brought, brought it to light. But that someone also has to make sure. Are you okay? You okay? You're limping. As expected, she tries to hide it. This time, when she squirms from my grasp, it's with enough force. She almost stumbles back if Zack hadn't caught her by the elbow. Even with two more people shoot, shooting her concerned looks, she's swift to shrug, to shrug it off. It's fine. I just had a little accident. Little accident. Hard to believe when her other arm's nursing the supposedly fine arm. Isabella doesn't buy any of it either. In a library? Well, I... Yeah. It kinda caught me off guard. Something's happened there, hasn't it? I don't have to elaborate on the question further. Shortly, she goes very still and the hand placed over her right arm shifts ever so slightly, its grip on the limb tightening. Not too firm to her, but just enough for a gesture of comfort for herself. Rarely, she casts a glance at everyone in the room, but only the one she spares for Isabella lingers, lingers longer, and in that moment, something unspoken passes between them. An understanding. It strikes me seconds later how utterly familiar her expression is. It's the same one I've seen far too many times in Isabella. Since that day at the movie house, every time her attempts to warn us have been so rudely dismissed. Let me see. Can... can we? We have to check if it's bad. Rebecca hesitates for a moment, then after a minute of consideration, she sighs and reaches for the hem of her sleeve, raises it just enough for Isabella to take a good look at it. Not swollen, but a large portion of her skin starting to turn an ugly shade of purple. Oh, that is gonna be one hell of a nasty bruise. Tell me about it. It was a library cart that hit me. Oh, that's you right. Know, the old metal ones they keep near the history section. Ouch! Like I said, nasty. But she's there she went after you yeah i i was in the archives looking something up suddenly she was just there bell she was using my own students against me what kind of terrible terrible person does that a ghost oh it makes my blood boil you should have just ran that woman's not something you can hit with a with a book but she did Laugh it up, Ashton. I did. Then the bloody cart came out of nowhere. And you know what? If it weren't for a damn book, I would be dead by now. Silence descends in the room as the gravity of, of that one word hits us all. Hits all of us. Dead. Another close call. Another would have. Another one we've nearly avoided. How long can we keep this up? We're bound to break at one point. No normal human being with a sane mind can last like this. It's a miracle Isabella hasn't cracked yet. After all, 
She was the one who found that letter. I've expected her to have caved in by now. Yet her voice, calm and composed in the face of this, is what cuts through the, through the thick air. I'll go get a cold compress for that arm. You guys take a seat first. Ashton and I... We... We have a lot of things to talk about. That marks the end of it. At least for the time being. As soon as Isabella returns and hands Rebecca the cold compress she promised, we get straight down to business. Surprisingly easy, considering the rigid air in the room. Although there is some tense fumbling for words at first, the whole conversation gains steam once what happened at last night at BRC has been put on the table. All at once, everything we brushed off, carelessly ignored, and rudely dismissed have been laid out cl for close scrutiny. Zack's encounters with the woman in his, in his dreams. Rebecca's close brushes with death every time she's a, she appears. The dread, the fear, the terror she brings out even in the bravest of us. Everything. Because no matter how bleak this all seems, there must still be a way out of this. There has to be. Logic be damned. Or at least, that's what Isabella and I would like to believe. Yet even as the cold morning light shifts into the, to the warm hues of a late afternoon, and eventually night, None of this still makes a fucking damn sense. Darkness has fallen, but we're still nowhere near figuring things out. If anything, we're more at a loss than we've ever been before we even started this. The next thing I know, frustration rears its ugly head and the sheets of paper I've been holding smacks the table harder than I've intended. The sound of it echoes loudly in the room, and everyone simply falls silent. Along with it is a release of another long-held breath. Perhaps the hundredth since this morning. We aren't getting anywhere at this rate. Don't just drop it. There must be something in this we aren't seeing yet. It's an odd thing to hear from her. The very words I've been telling myself every single time I find myself facing a dead end. We can use a little of the optimism right now, I guess. I know, but what are we supposed to be looking at here in the first place? The, uh, I don't know. Well, we already looked through those files. You were the one that picked it out last night, right? Maybe more of the history? All of them? I'm pretty sure every person we've checked in there isn't necessarily involved. One client possibly died of old age. Remember, you found that dumb paper. <laughs> Not so dumb if it can kill all of us. <laughs> Very funny, Z-Man. Anyway, like I said, you discovered that paper right before the open house. No one else was allowed inside during that time. It's too broad of a scope if we include every single person. In fact, the only notable ones are C and Jean Marie. Jean Marie, okay. But if we're going to include them in the count, shouldn't there have been more than enough people to end this fucking curse already? How does this thing even work? Yeah, okay, they went in and out of this place. But no, you still don't get it. What I'm trying to say about those clients is... Maybe there's more than one of it. Even my friend, the, the priest from the cathedral. It doesn't matter with the paper. It, it's literally, they go into the house and they're automatically cursed. Father Norman? Him too? Yeah. I visited him a few days ago. He... He was hysterical. Uh, they think he's sick, but... I have a feeling what might the real cause be. I knew it. I shouldn't have asked for his help. He was only trying to help too. It's not your fault. There might be more than one of that paper going around that we don't know about. More oh, this is when they need Marion! They need Marion! They need her to come out with the camera! I mean, look at all this stuff Rebecca brought with her. Apparently, our teachers have been lying to us all these years. So who knows? Hey, now don't blame us. Blame the bloody books they wrote. Quietly, Isabella reaches for one of the papers Rebecca has brought with her and carefully inspects the words written on the page. We weren't blaming you specifically, Rebecca. A copy of an old newsprint from even before the city has been founded. Her eyes narrow with each line that passes but lingers at the illustration of the noblewoman's servant. Why do they have to keep this in the restricted section? Rebecca merely shrugs at her inquiry, but her own annoyance seeps through her answer. How should I know? I wasn't even aware we have archives that go as far back as this. This is before the city was even founded. As a matter of fact, if it weren't for Andrew's help, I wouldn't have gotten my hands on any of it. Maybe they didn't think it would be important to talk about it. After all, this is more Anselm's than ours. That or some old bugger's hiding something. Probably. Why else would these tell a completely different story? Revising what's written seems a, use seems a useless endeavor on its own when you have nothing to gain from it. 
Thanks to those, we're also missing a lot of things here. All we had to go on go is with all we had to go with is the mansion, the letter, and all the stuff all the stuff selfish people have been keeping from the public. But what else? Somehow, even with all this information in hand, it still feels like there's something we're overlooking. At present, everything seems to point to where this all started. The Ermingard Mansion. Will bringing the letter back there fix everything? No. Fuck. How do I? The mansion's a private property now. I can't just waltz in there. I'd rather die before I, think, before I even think of begging right to let me in and, and investigate the place. One thing's very clear after these two, those, these two last days, however. We're not safe anywhere. I have to act fast if I want to keep my own friends alive. We can't keep running away. Sooner or later, she'll get the, she'll get us. Before that happens, I had to put an end to this. Sighing, I stand up and stretch out the kinks in my back. After several hours of sitting, we've been at this for too long. A break is needed. Time to let everything st time to let everything to sink in, or else we'll all burn out. I know I will, and it's another thing I cannot let happen when they're all counting on me like this. I'll be unspoken. It's in their eyes as they look up to me, waiting. We've been at this since morning. We should take a break for a few. The rest of it never makes it out of my mouth, as something heavy and grating sounds from the far end of the room. God, Rin, everyone's here! Ugh, you're not even safe in a group. Let me read this real quick. To Ashton and Isabella's relief, Rebecca called back. Soon she showed up at Salem Well, looking worse for wear. When the detective asked about it, worried, all the redhead could give was a frustrated answer. Fortunately, before the topic turned grim, Isabella stepped in. A harsh booming noise threading through the eardrums of everyone in the room. All at once, the three of them were on their feet, while I quickly palmed for my gun on the table. However, before I could pull it up and remove it to safety, the whole racket stops. Stillness descends in the room, and amidst the sudden hush, the four of us exchange anxious glances. So much for a break. Ashton, that might be... Gather everything. No questions asked. No questions asked. They waste no time getting to work, pulling up the documents we've been reading through. Even Isabel is unusually silent as she gathers everything in her arms. Her own movements sharp and precise, a deep furrow in her brow. There's fear, but something hardened and urgent overshadows it. But the moment doesn't last. Before we can even finish, another noise ups the tension already gripping the place. Suddenly, the lights go out and the wardrobe at the end of the room rattles as if something begs for freedom. Cautiously, eyes glued to it, eyes glued to it. I take a step forward and I release the lock from my gun. I'm no trigger-happy person. I'm not even sure if this will work on a ghost. But right now, it's the smooth surface against my palm, the trigger on, with the trigger on my finger, providing the closest thing I had to relief as I approach the closet. Ashton, what are you doing? I, I don't think that's a good idea. We should just... Where it is they all are, they immediately stop at the slight raise of my hand. But the edge is still- the edge is there while they all huddle in the space between the door and the room. In case this goes south, whatever I find inside, they have enough time and space to run for their position. In two deep breaths, I've crossed the room and stood in front of the closet. Whatever's inside has yet to stop thrashing. Instead, has now moved to banging at the door, louder and louder the longer I dally. Another shallow breath. I glance at my companions. A nod. Something creaks. Then in the next moment, I'm grasping at the handles and swinging the doors wide open to reveal... Nothing. Right away, I part the clothes hanging on it, and still none. No ghost. No woman. Not a single trace of whatever, whoever's inside. Confused, I glance back towards my companions, only to see them mirroring the same expression on my face. The noise has finally stopped. But I'm quite sure it isn't my imagination. Or maybe it is, and I'm too, just too strung up that my head's now making things up. Whatever the case is, we need to get out of here as soon as possible. This only confirms we aren't safe anywhere. Without bothering to close it, I move back, ready to leave. Adrenaline now coursing through the, every vein in my body. In the next second, I'm barking orders and... We should go. Everyone, we need to... <laughs> oh no... And said sprawling on my back as something cold catches my ankle and yanks. The resulting fall knocks the wind out of me. Pain racks my whole spine and the back of my head is, as it collides against the floor, with force enough to dislodge my own brain from my skull. 
A moment lasts before stars fade from my vision. And then, I sense it. Cold tendrils twisting around my ankles. The smell of vile rot assaulting my nose. Nauseating. Sickening. A foul smell draining every feeling in my body. The moment her horrid laughter, still as unpleasant and vicious as the last time I've heard it, reaches my ears. My eyes snap open. Perhaps it's just an experience. Or maybe my mind still attempted to comprehend this. Regardless, the minute my eyes land on her, the whole of my body freezes. The gun in my hand turns useless as my grip on it slackens. It's in the manner her gaze bores on me, I'll say. A look of utter hatred and malice. I've seen it loads of times. From suspects, mostly murderers, who never regretted their actions despite being caught. This is the face of someone you can no longer reason with. And I know, the moment she laughs again and starts dragging me towards her, it's already going to be the... Ashton! Snap out of it! No. I can't die here. Not yet. The haze fades from my mind and instinct look kicks in then and there. Everyone out! Get out! Get out of here! With one powerful tug, I yank my foot out of her grip and scramble back to my feet, ignoring the piercing world she fills the, she fills the room with. Within the span of a second, I'm gunning for the door, grabbing the wrist of the first person my hand can reach and leading everyone out. Into the hallway, down the flight of steps, and right inside my car. I waste no time flooring on the gas pedal the second the last person closes the door behind them, and in a short while, I'm driving us out of Salem well. I don't even entertain the thought of winding down just yet, even as the last of the woman's painful cries fade into the night. God. October 31st! First person, first chapter to make it to the, to the 31st. Alright. Let's see. With the help of his friends, Ashton tried to find a way to free themselves of the curse, piecing together what they currently know. But before they could figure it out, a ruckus coming from Isabella's closet broke the silence of the room. Uh, wait, was that- okay, that was the last one. Alright, oh, wow, we went- look how far- wow. There we are, there we are! Okay, we got pretty far! A dreary downpour starts off the Monday, although it doesn't last for more than an hour. The dark clouds lift just after the sun peaks over the horizon. Brief as it is, the rain has significantly dampened the park's usual cheery vibe. Mornings like this often mark the, the start of another bad week. An arrest gone wrong, another investigate leading to a dead end, or some truly fucked up shit being called in. Like that one time I was dispatched to a scene where a guy gouged his own eyeball out and almost ate it. It was a few chews away from swallowing it, in fact. Lost my dinner that day. Fun times. Of course, I doubt anything can stop getting cursed by Dan Chainletter of all things. This is the th sort of thing stupid people pass along as a prank through emails and text messages, for fuck's sake. A ghost chasing after you just puts the icing on that cake. So far, all we've done is run, snoop about, read stuff, and run again. It frustrates me to no end how we're still no closer to an answer. Even my car reflects the state of my, my mind is in. Photocopies of documents litter every available surface. 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 <laughs> Scattered all over the place, spilling from the passenger side and on, into the back seat, making an entire mess of what little space there is. Not that I'm any better. My last shower was 24 hours ago. I haven't slept at all. My last, last meal was that chocolate porridge thing Isabella offered. The way I am now, I'll definitely get a scolding. Rebecca will definitely give me an earful and tell me not to, and tell me to take care of myself better. Say that I'm killing myself on the job. I can already hear Isabella complaining how dark the bags under my eyes are getting, and how I reek and how I need to shower pronto. I can rest easy when this is all over. It's not that I can't feel the pang of hunger. With that woman chasing after you, it's difficult not to feel anything other than horror. The rush of adrenaline cur coursing through my veins and my desperation to survive. In fact, I can still sense the ghost of her touch from last night. Her bony digits wound tightly against around my ankle and that horrid smile she has on her as she pulls me closer. The memories enough to send a shiver up my spine and make me antsy. Perhaps the only thing com comforting about this is the sight of my gun nearby. From my dashboard, sunlight glints off Ophelia's surface. Really? You need your gun? Normally, I keep it hidden in a compartment. Luxembourg police regulations only allow authorized people to carry firearms. Even those are limited. 
I do have the authorization, but I never really saw the need for its use. When the standard issue tasers are more than good enough to, inca in to incapacitate anyone. If not, I can always throw them on their back. Those judo lessons Dad forced him to get as a child, as a kid, has its uses too. On a ghost, though, all of those will probably yield the same as a result. They're all useless. I might as well use a stick. However, it's the feeling of ease I'm after, of what little or wh what little of it I can gather from it. The awareness that I, at least, have something to protect myself with in case things go wrong. That I can still protect the people who are still depending on me despite the missteps I've taken. It doesn't take the edge off, though. That feeling that your whole body's been strained far beyond its capacity. Frankly, I'm already running out of steam. The only thing pushing me right now is knowing someone's still depending on me. A stretch is still in order, though. Whoops. I think I said I'd been sitting for too long. I've been sitting here since last night. Soon I step out of my car, closing it behind me with a thud as I take in my surroundings. The rain did wonders. The morning air feels crisper and cooler than it has ever been in days. For once, the weather seems to be taking a turn for the normal. It looks more normal. In the distance, beyond the buildings on the line of the horizon, dark clouds are blowing in. A storm might be due this evening, give or take. A shame for the people looking forward to a Halloween night. Ah! For me, I just stay in, eat candy, watch horror movies. That's about it. I'm just not sure whether this is something I can look forward to as well. Still, I bask in the change it brings. Inhale. Exhale. Breathing in, taking in the peace, as if it'll be my last. But as with all the good things, the quiet shortly comes to an end. Not necessarily a bad end. The chatter reaches my ears first halting my movements. Sure enough, when I glance up, I find them. Zack, Rebecca, and Isabella, just as they enter the park grounds, bag a convenience food and store in hand. Convenience store food in hand. After last night's flight from Salem Well, we've elected to stay the night here, unsure if our own homes will be still safe. Normally, we'd all be adverse to the idea of spending the night outside like this, but panic and distress has tainted that decision. It's not like any of us had gotten an ounce of sleep anyway. On the off chance one of us did, it only lasts but a second, or it's a fitful one. But looking at them right now from afar, it's easy to mistake them for just a group of friends on a day out. Isabella is gesturing wildly with her arms as she talks. Something's funny or amusing, probably, because it's soon followed by Zach's booming laughter and Rebecca's giggles. Their voices fill the atmosphere with light air, temporarily easing off the disheartening mood. It's easy to pretend we're not knee-deep in a life-and-death situation the way they're acting now. If anything, it's only their appearance that betrays that mask. Slight, slightly disheveled, bags under their eyes, exhausted curve in their shoulders, and dragging footsteps. Most people would think you're a bum at this point. But the closer they get, the more obvious these signs are to the naked eye. Zach tosses an energy drink my way the moment he the distance allows it. Isabella hands me the other bag she's holding, before sitting herself on the edge of the fountain. The sudden of warm food immediately wipes from the bag when I open it, carried further by a passing breeze. Whatever sweet salsa they drizzled, dribbled over this pork wannabe, it smells heavenly. Hell, even these sour-looking vegetables seem appetizing. Despite myself, without even checking exactly what this is, hunger swiftly takes over every rational thought. I dig, dig in without waiting for them to start. The rest of them appear to be the, of the same mind, too. Soon enough, they also start with theirs. No casual talk while, we're, while we fill our empty stomachs. Exhausted as we are, food is something we can't, for, we can't forego. Starvation dulls the thinking, weakens the body. If, if we are to survive this, we're going to have to take care of ourselves first. In a matter of minutes, we're done and dumping the empty cartons on a nearby waste bin. Along with, it the sh along with it is the shift of the mood. Back to dismal. Back to the problem at hand. The comfortable atmosphere from minutes ago was nice while it lasted. Admittedly, I missed these kinds of moments between us. They never had the chance. We never had the chance. Always busy on some project or work. The things we take it for granted. Now we realize how we're realizing how valuable they are. The world has an awful sense of humor. While the one we just had is short lived, it's another thing I want to look forward to. If we ever free ourselves from this damn curse, I like to believe there's a way. For now, we have to focus back on the present. This. Dead people. The letter. The curse. It's not simple to bring these up, but necessary. All right, so what now? Where do we go from here? I don't know. I think we need to go talk to that sea guy. I think that's my holy shit. Now we're get. Oh my god, I forgot. I forgot. 
So I'm wondering back here, um, if one, like, say if Rebecca died, it, or, like, Rebecca died and Zach's alive and there's, Zach dies but Rebecca lives, or they both die. Like, there's probably, like, one for each. It's not a question directed at anyone in particular. But they all look at me as if my face has all the answers in the world. I used to think so, back when I'm at the top of my game, and I'm still sure of everything. Now there's just uncertainty sullying, sullying whatever decision I come up with. At some point, logic has simply stopped working here, and we've started grasping at straws. Along with exhaustion, fatigue, and stress, we have enough kindling to get a fire burning. The not-so-pleasant kind of fire. Oh boy, are we arguing? Well, first, we can't just stay here. That much is all Oh god. But we can't just keep running like this either, Becca. Sooner or later, she'll... As if we have a choice. We can't even go back to our own homes because that thing might get us. No, we're safe. But dying is the last thing I want to do right now, Isabella. Not to a stupid chain letter. You were... You were too... Too gullible to pick up, bring with you, and show to everyone. She didn't willingly showed it, show it. You guys took it from her. do it on purpose. Becca, had I known, had I known, I wouldn't have. Hey, hey, you two. None of us want to die to this. Just calm down. We ain't getting anywhere shouting at each other. Whose side are you on, Zachary? No one's. But we can't just say it's her fault. She did warn us not to open it, and both you and Ashton... That doesn't exempt her from any blame. She's still largely responsible for it. And you're not? Damn, those eyes of hers. Like, holy shit. I didn't say that. Do you really think I don't blame myself for this as well? I tried to warn all of you. None of you listened. Now you're blaming me for something I kept telling you guys since day one? You're just as responsible for this as I am. So now you're throwing it back at us. We wouldn't even be having this problem if you're... Well, you two cut it out. This ain't the place for, for... I don't know, petty squabbles. If you don't want to get caught in it, then stay out of this, Zachary. Oh, no, Zach. Don't stop her. Let her say it. I'm sure she... If oh, I know sorry. Better, she's already... Already what? You want me to say it? Out loud? That I find you in this whole thing? All right, that's enough. Everyone, shut up! Damn! We all fall to the silence at my words, and an awkward, stiffly mood descends between us. I do not mean to shout, to snap at them, to add to that kindling. Not in a moment when any time, anywhere she might get to one of us. We're all in the same boat, yet here we are, playing the blame game. Little by little, we're falling apart. Caving into the pressure, to the bleak situation we're trapped in. Did that ghost mean for this to happen? To divide us- divide each of us so she could pick us off one by one right after? Who knows? Anything is possible now if her kind can exist. With the fire burning between us rising as high as it does now, I'm afraid, deathly afraid, that the possibility might come sooner than I can figure all this out. Fuck, I still can't think straight. I can't even believe the next words coming out of my mouth. That out of everyone, I had to be the one saying these to them. This is more their forte than mine. Keeping the peace, plus placating. Placating, placating, complete. Eh, while well, I unintentionally aggravate people with badly chosen words. Funny how fast the tables have turned just after one unfortunate incident. How am I even supposed to cope? If we all want to get out of this mess in one piece, we're gonna have to cool our heads first. Before my own temper flares, I walk away and slide back into my car. If the door slams with more force than needed, I like to blame it on the pent up anger boiling up in me. Not sure, even sure what or who I'm angry at. The ghost? At them? Or maybe at myself for being this useless? Because despite none of them saying it, I know. I know, goddammit. They're still counting on me. In spite of my failures, or every harsh word I've uttered, or how unbearable I could be as a friend, it's there when the tension after the argument finally breaks, and one by one, they follow me and get in the car. It's in this... It's in concerned glances they shoot my way when I start the engine without a word and drive off. It's in their silence. A heavy gift. Their unwavering trust. Yet it's one it's one I'm more than willing to carry. Even through my own exhaustion. If only to keep them safe. In this city of 68,000 strangers, they... They're the ones, only ones I have left. 
Though in all seriousness, a good rest is still our best bet for now. Thinking with an exhausted brain, it's almost as good as running around in circles. We might as well just throw ourselves at that ghost and be done with this. The local Irish pub may not be the best place to hang around when one hasn't slept a wig or you're stressed. More often than not, it's loud. Sometimes the music played by drunkards grates the ears, and the whole place smells like piss on a bad day. All in all, it's the very definition of the last place I'll hang around after a wakeful night. But it's safe. Or as safe as it can be with G's and security watching the place. Makes it easy to find help, in case you find yourself in a tight spot. The place being owned by a person I've implicitly placed my trust on provides some semblance of comfort, too. Gregor, Brett Tedder G, or just G to his regular patrons, might be rough around the edges. Sometimes a bit too gruff for a man serving drinks behind the counter, but he belongs to the good folk of the city. If there's anyone in this place I can rely on to look after people important to me, it's probably him. He means well, surprisingly, despite his surly demeanor. Carrots to some extent, for people he likely only sees once or twice a week, or on a bad day. Not the best job in the world, in my opinion, but that's exactly it, isn't it? In wine, there's truth. Alcohol, in this case. It loses the tongue, forces one to let his or her guard down. Whatever in inhibish in inhibitions anyone has, it all flies straight out the window at their few glasses. It has made him observant, too. Always has one or two things to say about someone or something. Most of the time it's me, opinionated ass. But God knows how many times I've asked for his help, when I've met with a dead end in a case or I'm in trouble. This time's no different. I'm really hoping... I'm gonna say by here, I'm really hoping that we run into Marion. I hope she's okay, but... She is most likely still trapped in the Ermengarde Mansion! Down in the secret cellar's... Jail place. After spending the night at the local park, Ashton and his friends tried to figure out what their next step will be. However, coupled with fatigue and stress, the conversation quickly went downhill. Frustrated, Zach, Ashton, washed out, Ashton walked out, suggesting they cool their heads first. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and end this off here. Thank you guys so much for watching. Leave a like if you liked it, leave a comment if you liked it, and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye! The ground. Oh, oh god, I see her in the distance! Oh no, that's scary! And all of a sudden, she's just there. A small, grotesque form lingered at the far end of the basement on all fours. Like a twisted spider, she stares at us, a look of hunger in her eyes, and venom in the twisted man's smile.